at Hello Killian is launching Open Interpreter, an open source code interpreter that runs locally. Now, installation is simple, but there's a few things in there that can get a little bit tricky. So we're going to go through them right now. Ready? Let's go. So first of all, here's the GitHub page, and it has everything that you need on here, including code, various issues that are being answered, and it has a demo of how to use it, as well as a quick start guide and what's different between the two. So how it compares is OpenAI service is hosted, closed source, and heavily restricted, no internet access, limited set of pre-installed packages, a maximum upload, and a maximum runtime limit. And everything's cleared when the environment dies or closes. So there's a few ways that we can run Open Interpreter. First one is to install it locally. We do that by opening up our command prompt, usually run as administrator so that we can install stuff. And so a couple of commands you need to know here, CD is change directory and DIR directory just lists everything in that folder. You can do CD dot dot to go up a folder basically like that. So just as a quick refresher in case you haven't used it in a while. All right, so I'm gonna change directory and I'm gonna put it into users for now. All right, now that we're here, we're just gonna install Open Interpreter. So we're gonna take this command, pip install Open Interpreter, and we're just gonna paste it right in there. And it's gonna get to work installing everything that we need to run this locally. Then we just run Interpreter and it starts. By default, it's gonna be connected to GPT-4 and you do need your OpenAI API key. If you don't know how to find that, just Google OpenAI API key. It's gonna be in your user section under API keys. So you can create a new one, call it, call it your local open open interpreter, take your secret key, don't share that with anybody. I'm gonna erase this after I use it here. Type it in here under OpenAI API key. You can also save it for later if you want, and it's ready to run. So I'm not gonna go through too many examples here, but we're just gonna quickly run something to see if it works. So we're gonna ask basically, return the five latest UBC headlines. I think that's a really good test because basically what it has to do, so first of all, it's gonna to have to plan out what it's doing. So it's gonna to have to install the necessary Python packages for web scraping if they're not already installed. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna fetch the homepage that we asked for, extract the, extract the headlines and then return the five latest headlines. Normally it's gonna ask you if you want, want to run the code every single time. Now there's an option to disable this which can be, you know, it could cause some issues. And I'll show you a few ways that we can improve that later. But basically, as you can see here, so it, it found the URL and it's getting, it's getting the headlines like we requested. We have successfully fetched the BBC homepage. The reason why I think this is a good test is one, it, as you can see, it connects to the internet. It can write Python script and it can solve something that's gonna require multiple steps to solve. And so now it got the little list of headlines and it returns them. This is it or rather it, it gets it here. And here they are, the five latest BBC headlines. It just writes them out right there. All right, so we hit Control C to exit. Now, if we wanted to run this without having to answer yes every single time you run it, you can do the dash Y here and you won't get these, would you like to run this code? And you had to hit Y every single time. But let's say you don't have OpenAI access, you don't have the API key, you don't wanna pay for the API key, you wanna run everything locally on your computer. Can you do that? Yes you're gonna to have to run this interpreter dash dash local. But it seems like it works very well in, by default, the auto setup, auto install works very well by default in on Macs, but not so much on Linux and, and Windows. Somebody did find a workaround and we're gonna see right now if we're able to, if we're able to do that. So the code llama, llama CCP Python causes issues. So, so what seems to work better that people are reporting is to, install it beforehand. So pip install llama-ccp-python. So we're gonna try that here and let's see if that's gonna work a little bit better. All right, so it's collecting everything that it needs and installing everything that we're gonna need for that. All right, so now that should fix that issue. So we're gonna to try to do interpreter and we're gonna do dash dash local. So that's the way you install interpreter with code llama, the open sourced LLM model that allows you to do everything without relying on OpenAI. So let's, and you have to spell it correctly. That's a pro tip for you people out there, spell things correctly, pro tip for myself. And so by default, Open Interpreter is actually fairly, like it's not huge in size, it's pretty small. I forget what it is, but it's very, very modest. But, you know, if you wanted to run it locally, you're gonna have to install Code Llama for locally. And that can be rather large depending on which sort of options you choose. So you can choose, you can use your keys to go up and down, just like between 7 billion, 13 billion, and 34 billion parameters. 
just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to go with the smaller model and we're going to use the low quality again, just, and we're just going to do that just so we can demonstrate how everything works. All right. So as you can see here, the model set to code llama. All right. So we were able to install it. And so I, I started, I just wanted to test it by saying hi. And this is code llama responding by saying hi back in 50 different ways. Now, I'm not going to test it here because I doubt that I'm going to see great results with the lowest quality, lowest parameter model. But the point is, it is working. It is up and running. In a later video, I'll probably install the highest thing and play around with it to see how it compares to, to GPT-4. It sounds like Code Llama is supposed to be very close, but that's the trick in case you had trouble installing it or if you haven't installed it yet. I just saved you like two hours worth of time because this took me a while to figure out. I should have probably read the documentation first, but basically if you run into this issue, we can't install code llama. This is the workaround. So basically install llama ccp python before you run anything else. And that should work like a charm. There's also another way to run it. And that is with Google collab, Google collab for those who haven't used it. It looks a little bit like this. So basically what it is, you put the code in here and you hit play and it executes that code. It's free to start with. You can do quite a bit of things with it. So if you prefer to do that, open up Google Collab, go here to the GitHub page, and then they have a demo here that you can actually click to open up in Google Collab. And you can actually just run through the setup here by clicking play on every one of these buttons. And it will actually, and it shows you some basic examples that you can do as well as some advanced examples of things that you can do with it. And so here, just what you do is you save a copy in Drive. So that's going to create your own sort of copy that you can use. So you're not sharing with anybody. Open that in a new tab and basically start at the top. So first pip install open interpreter. So that's going to install open interpreter in Google Collab. And once that's done running 10 seconds, not too bad. Then we're going to do import interpreter. And remember, you're still going to use your API key. And so we're going to put our API key right there and hit play. So this imports interpreter into this environment so we can use it. It gives it its uh, API key so that we can access GPT-4. And then we're going to do interpreter auto run. So auto run is basically, again, setting it so that you don't have to hit yes after every prompt. And then you can try the various different things like please print hello world. So if you play this, this is the main command interpreter dot chat. And then inside of it, you put your prompt and that's what gets executed. But here's the thing. If you delete this and you just leave it like that and you run it, that opens up that back and forth interface similar to similar to ChatGPT. And there you can type in whatever you want, like what is 12 times 89? And then it's going to go ahead and complete that right there. There it is. And if you scroll down, you can actually see some pretty cool and more advanced examples of what it's able to do. Things like using, uh, creating animations, it's able to download audio files and modify them and output the modified audio file, create documents, added various documents in a folder and much, much more. So definitely check it out. And you can just basically do all this within Google Collab or locally on your device. If this was helpful, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Thank you. My name is Russ Roth. Thank you for watching.